what blockchains really enable is this trustless decentralized computing environment. Um, uh, particularly when you look at the rise of smart contracts, obviously with Ethereum and then kind of your whole new slew of L2s and all L1s. Um, and I think what's really exciting about that is like, A, uh, you obviously have this new way of like, you know, executing code, smart contracts, um, the like cliche example is code that makes commitments. Nobody can really shut it off. But what we're really excited about as a fund is this idea that you can now distribute this interoperable form of ownership to users of an application which kind of unlocks this whole new suite of game threading mechanisms and incentive structures, which when you think about this ability to completely bootstrap a new application, right now it's extremely hard, right? Like you kind of have massive network effects of dominating social applications along with most marketplaces that have really um, risen to any level of prominence. Whereas what you get in crypto is finally this new attack vector uh, for possibly dismantling some of those, which is uh, frankly, in my opinion, like token distribution and some of the net new perspectives you get there. And I think zooming out, what really differentiates the innovation in blockchain from some of those prior ones is a fundamentally new business model, right? Token networks. That's not really something that you got before um, in any of those other massive advances. So that made me very, I would say, like intellectually excited about the space. I think in school, studied a lot of economic history, and it seemed like every perspective when you looked at it from like political economy, the monetary system, everything was kind of like very much drifting towards crypto. And it seemed to be the intersection of a lot of different perspectives that you could look at where um, kind of like uh, the economy was going. So yeah. got really excited about it there. And then I think just kind of from a personal perspective, it's a really exciting field. I mean, it's a combination of like econ, math, CS, finance, highly interdisciplinary. And I feel like I was always somebody that wanted to go back and take kind of every intro course again in college. And I feel like I sort of do that every day now. It's like catching on to a lot of new things. The field is moving very fast. Don't get me wrong. It sometimes can feel like drinking through a fire hose with how much you need to learn. But overall, it's really exciting. Yeah. No, I, I find a lot of, I empathize with a lot of what you said. And I guess, you know, I'm coming personally from a background in data science and also VR and AR. And I spent a lot of time thinking like, I was like, shoot, I, I'm lucky I got to work in my early career in VR. And then I moved to data science and both like fascinating fields. And I was like, why does crypto really suck me in every time I try to, you know, focus on some of these other ones? And I find that it really is the combination of so many disciplines. I mean, you, you mentioned there's a history component to it. There's this finance and econ. It's still technical. Um, so it combines like a lot of this stuff and then it touches every industry too. So, um, you can kind of find your niche, whether that be in, in media or in more of the econ route. You're listening to the Unstoppable Podcast, the go-to place for everyone to learn about the latest innovations in Web3, NFTs, and the decentralized web. Welcome to the Metaverse.